soulmates aren't found. They're forged in the same fire. Work at it even when we get tired. Making ups out of downs, doing all that it takes. Soulmates aren't found. They're made. Hi, I'm Kristen Ostrander. Welcome to Music That Inspires. And today I have got an amazing song for you. It is called Made. So I, if you haven't heard it, I am so excited to introduce you to this song. And I hope that the words kind of flow deep into your soul. And I am going to crush some unrealistic expectations that are out there. I love this song. It is Made by Spencer Crandall. It is written by Jeff Cherry, Spencer Crandall, Andrew Beeson. I said that and Ian McConnell. Okay, so these are the writers, the artists, everything else, but that's the lyric, right? I think we're brought up. We we're all told from a young age, right? The story. We see movies, we hear songs, all this kind of stuff that one day you're just going to find that perfect person and it's going to be all sunshines and rainbows and you're going to instantly click and everything's going to be amazing just like some Hollywood movie and the stars will align and everyone will you'll hear this oh and everything will be all good and great. But I am here to tell you that the first song, the first time I heard this song, I was like, yes, finally someone is saying like the real stuff, right? Someone's finally saying things like there is no quick fix when we're fighting in the car. <laughs> Hello, anybody that's been married a long time. I've been, this is 25 years for me. This year is our 25th year, been together for 27 years, and there's arguments, there's fights, there's different things. And what I love about this song is that it's just so real. And I totally agree and believe this. And now some people, there are those rare few, I think, out there. I'm not saying this stuff doesn't exist. But there's those rare few people out there that they instantly meet and everything is just from day one has only just been so perfect. Sunshines, rainbows, you're, it's absolutely clicking every time you have the same goals, you have the same ideas, you have the same beliefs and nothing ever clashes. If you know someone like that, send them my way. I want to interview them. I want to talk to them about what was the magic. What was the secret? Because honestly, we know that relationships are full of trouble, right? It just happens. We don't always agree on things. We don't see eye to eye on every single thing. We're not the same person. We don't have the same experiences. We don't have all of those things. So when you hear a song that says soulmates aren't found, they're made, I totally, you, you know, you might have to have so many years of experience in a relationship and marriage for a long time. And of course, let me put a disclaimer out there, right? To the right people who are mutually in love and want to work together. Because, y'all, let's just be real. Relationships are work. Marriage is work. Any relationship that you have is going to take effort. Yes, intentional effort. And so this song is just, it goes through that. So again, the lyric I read was, we work at it even when we get tired. We make ups out of downs doing all that it takes because soulmates aren't found, they're made. Now, one of the lines in the song is forged in the same fire. So I don't know about you, but I, have you ever seen the forging process? Do you know what the forging process is? I'm going to educate you if you don't. The forging process is like a manufacturing of like steel. Like even when you think of forged in fire, there's a TV show, I think now that I just just discovered. I had no idea. Not my type of show, but they're making swords and blades. And in order to do that, to shape metal, they use hammering and rolling and heat and pounding. And it's this constant heating and cooling process where it's kind of beat to death. <laughs> now, when you say you're forged in the same fire, that's really how you're creating your relationship is that you're both going through the same things in life and your relationship and careers and all that you're sharing life together and that's how soulmates are made instead of just born and ready you're made in the same fire when you're committed to doing life together doing whatever it takes because did you know that if you're married you made a vow you made several vows most of us made our typical vows of till death do us part for richer or poorer in sickness and in health. And I think in the world these days, there's life, love is just so fickle. You can throw it away. If I just don't feel it or I'm not feeling it anymore, guess what? You're not always going to feel honeymoon love. You're not always gonna feel like it was in the beginning where you just can't get enough of each other. 
sometimes you can't wait to get away from each other. And so when, like this song says, when there's no quick fix when you're fighting in the car, y'all, how many times have you fought in the car or in the house or slamming doors and getting frustrated? Cause that's verse two, right? That's what I love about this. It's the verse two here is we're not written in the stars. There's no magic fix when we're fighting in the car. We are both right. So we're both wrong. We slam doors because we're headstrong. <laughs> we stay up until 2 a.m. and we go back and forth till we find common ground. There's so much truth to this. Soulmates aren't found. They're made. We bend even though we won't break. And y'all, that just takes a couple of things. Number one, it takes a solid commitment that no matter what, even if you're going to be bending, even if you're going to be slamming doors and taking time away for a few minutes, that you're committed, committed to your love. And when I say love, I'm not talking about that, oh my gosh, I can't wait to see him again, kind of like that giddy honeymoon style love. Of course, there's attraction in the beginning and you want to have all that, but the kind of love I'm talking about, there's 14 rules to this love, right? You guys want to know that? 14 rules and where they come from. You know where I'm going to get them from, right? <laughs> the word of God has the rules for love. And it's not about, do you feel all happy and giddy inside? It doesn't mean that you have all the same hobbies and all the same interests and all the same friends. It doesn't say any of that. It doesn't say that you have to keep up with the Joneses and have your eyelashes done and your kind of all kinds of different work and maybe some Botox. It doesn't say any of that. It doesn't even say anything about your physical attraction. It doesn't even talk about feelings. I know, right? Or weren't we supposed to just be like, always have to feel happy, always have to feel content? Because love is not a feeling. Love is actually an action word. Love is an action word. So when we're talking about finding and keeping your soulmate. I like to argue, and I'm with Spencer here on the fact that soulmates are made because it takes this, right? So we're gonna read this. Everybody, you're probably familiar with this. It's read at a lot of weddings, people. It's in your Bible. So I'm sure you might've read it too, but let's like dive into this. When we're talking about our soulmate, someone we wanna spend the rest of our life with, someone that we feel deeply connected to and desire to be connected to them. There are gonna be bumps in the road. Life gets in the way, sin gets in the way. But if you live by these rules, You'll be over and over, make your soulmate. And I'm going on 25 years of marriage here this year. So I got a little bit to say about this. Got a little bit of experience in these areas, right? So love is patient. I'm going to read it all. And then we're going to go through a few of them and just be like, let's just look inward for a second. Love is patient and kind. It does not envy. Let's be reminded what envy is. A feeling of discontentment or a resentful longing for what someone else has does not envy someone else's stuff or their relationship or their qualities, does not envy, does not boast and is not proud, does not boast, does not brag about their own accomplishments, is not proud and puffed up and look at me, look at me, look at me. Pride is not proud. It does not dishonor others, does not dishonor others. Love. Do you love your spouse? No dishonor. It's not self-seeking. It is not easily angered. It keeps no records of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres. Love never fails. This kind of love, that's my KSV version. <laughs> this kind of love never fails as defined above. 1 Corinthians 13. So y'all, they got me at the first one. Love is patient. Patient. Are you patient with your spouse when you're fighting in the car? <laughs> are you patient with your spouse when you are always on time and they're always late? Are you kind? Notice I'm not asking you if they're kind or if they're patient. You know why? Because the only person that you need to be concerned with is you. The only person you can control is you. Only reactions you can control is you, right? Remember, this doesn't say, do you feel patient? It says, love is patient. Love is kind. Kindness 
It does not envy. It doesn't want somebody else's something, whether that's their looks or their house or their career or their job or their relationship or their spouse or how they act. It does not boast and is not proud. It does not brag about their own. Look at me. It does not dishonor others. Other, other scriptures, other translations, I guess, will say it's not rude. It does not dishonor others. It's not rude. Rude or self-seeking. Y'all, let's just stop there for a second. When you're being self-seeking, it says you're not being loving. Always seeking after yourself. Now, that doesn't mean ignore yourself. It doesn't mean put yourself at the bottom of the barrel and disregard yourself. But it says it's not self-seeking. And it's not, oh, we're all going to fall under our chair here, right? It's not easily angered. Are you easily angered? Towels on the floor, garbage in the car. I know all of us. Our spouses have quirks, right? We have quirks as well. Things that we can put up with and things that we complain about, right? It's not easily angered. I like to put a side note there. Not easily angered, annoyed, frustrated. It keeps no records of wrongs. Love. Remember, it doesn't say we all feel happy and we feel all the time. It doesn't say forgive and forget. It says keeps no record. Of wrongs that means you're not bringing up what happened three years ago you're not bringing up what happened two weeks from Tuesday when so-and-so did so and so. the keeping records of wrongs keeps our heart bitter did you know what you focus on grows when you focus on it grows things grow if you're focusing on someone's wrongs that's all you're gonna see and y'all we all do wrong all the time all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God Romans 3 I think we all have sinned and fall short. So if, would you like someone to keep a record of your wrongs? That's why he says love keeps no records of wrongs. Even God is not keeping a record of our sin. He says, I have removed your sin from the far as the east is from the west. I will remember your sins no more. God's not keeping a record. Why should you? This is, what, this is his written record of how we are to have that soulmate. We are to make it, make ourselves into soulmates by treating each other this way. Does not delight in evil, but rejoices with truth. Rejoices with truth. Where's truth found? In your word, y'all. You know this. That's where the truth is. Should be ever on our lips, not rejoicing in any sort of evil. Never rejoicing in evil. Never rejoicing in hard harm or hardship or abuse. Remember, this goes two ways. Both people ought to be loving in this way. And when you lose your way, you just come back to this. Which one am I failing at? Which one am I having a hard time with? Patience, kindness, no envy, boast. Anything in your love, if you're loving someone, if you're in a relationship, if you're in a marriage and something's wrong, check one of these. There's only 14 on the list. Seems like a lot, right? But not really. Always protects. There's a good one. Are you protective of your spouse, of their reputation, of their work, of their good name? Or do you speak ill of them? Do you complain about them? Do you throw them under the bus? Do you expose all of their quirks and their issues? Or do you protect? Always trust, always believing the best of intentions, best of ideas, best of thoughts, best of words trust always hopes you ever had some hard times you're really just not getting along and you are constantly at odds maybe there's some financial difficulties or i know a lot of couples going through infertility and that can be really difficult and very emotional but are you hoping first in god and then in one another always hopes and finally always perseveres Perseverance, what does that mean? Perseverance is getting through it, having this deep-seated vow and commitment that no matter what happens, we will press on. We will get through it. Now, y'all, every couple argues. Every couple doesn't always get along, right? You might not be fighting, knock-down, drag-out fights, and some of you might be. <laughs> Been there, done that. <laughs> 
had a lot when there's true personalities. My husband and I are very different. And I think God brings people that are different together because he also says iron sharpens iron. Going back to that forged in the same fire, right? Lyrics from this song. When you're forged in the same fire, you're going through the same things. But that's difficult. Heat. That's a couple episodes ago when we were talking about the refining process, right? The refining of gold or silver and how heat brings all of the impurities up to the top so they can be scraped off, right? Same thing with being forged in fire. You're being forged, being hammered and pressed and smoothed out and heated and cooled and heated and cooled and strengthening. And even the word says iron sharpens iron. It doesn't mean, it doesn't say iron sharpens butter, right? We're both iron. We both need sharpening. We all need sharpening. And it's talking about like the another lyric in the song is doing all that it takes. That's perseverance. That's going back and not being proud, but being humble and saying, what can I do to, what can I bring to the table? I hear sometimes just a lot of people in their, I want to say middle age, I want to say like 40s to 50s, the divorce rate quadruples between 40 and 50 for most couples in America. And even in Christianity, even in Christian couples, it's the divorce rate's not much different in Christian couples, which I find very sad because if both people are calling themselves Christians, they're accountable to this. All 14 of these rules, I know that's such a bad word, right? How about principles, policies, words of the wise? This is God's word to us. And he tells us exactly how to love each other. He actually doesn't just tell us. He shows it to us. He lived it. He came here and showed us what love was. Greater love has no one than this, that a man laid down his life for his friends. And then he says, you are my friends. There's other scripture you can go through about marriage, but I'm just talking about debunking the crazy myth that if you're going through a rough period or a rough season in your relationship and there's ups and downs, y'all, 25 years, we've seen it all. There's a lot of ups and a lot of downs. Even recently I was reading about Michelle Obama and Barack and Michelle Obama. And she said they had been, they were pushed in 30 some years of marriage. And she said, she said, I'll take the 22 good ones for the 10 bad ones we might've had over the years. Admitting, yeah, there's bad years. There's been times where we barely made it, barely hanging on, but there's always something to go back to. Always perseveres, always trusts, finds hope, rejoices with the truth. And a lot of times when we're feeling disconnected, it's because there's something that we need to look inward about. What am I not bringing to the table? Am I being kind? Am I being patient? Am I <clears throat> overlooking an offense? Am I keeping a record of wrongs? We bounce back better when we go back to what we've lost, right? In the song, it says we bounce back better because we go back to this. We go back to the anchor that holds the example of love. Lord, how do I love when I don't feel like it? When he's this and he's that and he's not doing what he's supposed to be doing. He's not loving me, so I'm not going to love him. No. Because did you know that we're accountable to this word? Even if someone else isn't doing their part? And it's okay to talk about those things. Sit down and have a, we go, one time we went to a Christian marriage conference and the pastor there was talking about how we had an intense fellowship meeting <laughs> instead of an argument. He said, we don't argue. We have intense fellowship meetings. <laughs> I always love that. So when you're in an intense fellowship meeting with your spouse, we can go back and first of all, love is not proud and it's not boasting. That means you don't walk into an argument with, I've done this and I've done that and I'm doing this and I'm doing that. And how come you're not doing it? It's what can I do? Because the love lays down its life for the other. And that looks like this. It looks like patience and kindness. Look at the life of Jesus and how he loved people. He wasn't bashful about talking about sin, but then he says, go and sin no more. I forgive you. Go and forgive others. I love you. Go and love others. And he tells us right here how. This is what it looks like. There is no mystery. There's no magic secret sauce. It's all right here, 1 Corinthians 13. 
Versus what? Two through eight. Hopes, trust, protects. Are you protecting your spouse? Are you protecting your marriage? Oh, this is what it takes. And I'm so glad that Spencer and the writers of this song really captured what a soul mate really is. Because it doesn't talk about all this other Hollywood stuff where you just feel this over the moon feeling and butterflies in your stomach and you're in la land and you can't wait to see them. Look, I, I can't wait for my husband to come home from work either. I do. I like to see him. I like to share my time and my day with him. And it's the person I want to talk to. But it's because we practice these things. And when we're not being patient and kind, we take some time out to recalibrate. That might be, I like to get in my car and just take a drive and listen to music and just calm down and kind of figure out where I'm going wrong here. But a lot of it is self-awareness. And it's including God. I have made 25 years of marriage work, number one, because my husband and I are both willing to do what it takes to persevere for it never to fail. These are the rules. This kind of love never fails. And if you truly believe that and practice that, there's reward. What God has joined, let no one separate, Mark 10, 9. Or how about Ecclesiastes 4, 12? Two. A man might prevail against one who is alone. Two will withstand him a three-fold cord. It's not quickly broken. God, you, your spouse. Between the three of you, you can make it work. So I'm wondering, have you found your soulmate? Have you created and made yourselves into soulmates? Are you still looking for that one? Don't look for perfection. Look for someone who's going to love like 1 Corinthians 13. And you are accountable for you. So how are you loving? It's better to give than to receive. But guess what? God always promises that the giver grows even richer in Proverbs. I can't wait to, I'm working on a Proverbs study right now. Actually, I'm writing a study in Proverbs and I can't wait to bring it to the world. But as I'm just deeply involved in Proverbs, I see these things. Those who are generous, those who give, they grow all the richer. That's what Proverbs says. It says sometimes there's blessing in silence. Our words are important and the righteous are always rewarded. We're looking always for instant rewards these days. Everyone wants to say, oh, it's not sunshines and rainbows. People quit relationships so early. Y'all, you're just, I'm still discovering stuff and stories about my husband and his past and his life and his family and different things. And even some of our, your goals and dreams, they change over time. So it was, if you're not at 25 years yet, I gotta tell you, you've got so much to look forward to as you grow and change in life and raise kids and then eventually they grow up and you do different stages of life together, there's always something new to discover. If you're in a stale period right now where things are kind of blah and boring and meh, you'll get through it. Love like this. It has so much reward. It has so much reward. Even if in the moment someone's not loving you back in this way, this kind of love has reward even if you give it. It's not always about how you feel. It's about what you do. Your actions speak louder than your words. And sometimes we can even show love even if we don't feel love. We can be kind even if someone else isn't or if they're not receptive. So I'm just here to encourage you. First of all, listen to the song Made, Spencer Crandall. And let me know your thoughts on it. Let me know. I enjoy avoid op opposing viewpoints. If you found your soulmate and you guys just haven't been growing and changing together and it's all just been sunshines and rainbows, <laughs> let's have a conversation because I hope that is out there. But for the rest of us, we have we have been forged in the same fire. We create our soulmates out of each other while we constantly work out problems and figure out how to deal with things and figure out how to live in the same space and be opposite or be the same. And that can have its challenges as well, but it's so rewarding. So my encouragement to you is number one, add this song to your playlist. If you're married, just, just let it resonate with you. Let it just sink down into your soul and realize that you're not alone, that it doesn't just happen overnight. It happens over time. Even if you have said, I do, and have fallen in love, you can, love like this and continually 
work on the fact that you're creating your soulmate by living and breathing and moving with them and loving them the way that God has loved you. So thank you guys so much. I know that you could be anywhere else doing any other thing and I don't take that for granted. And Spencer, if you're out there and you want to discuss this song with me, reach out to us at musicthatinspires.com. I'd love to have a conversation with you about this song. You guys add it to your playlist and we'll see you same time, same place next week on Music That Inspires.